Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of connective tissue in terms of histology. So as you probably know, we have four main types of tissue in the body. We have uh, epithelial tissue, we have nervous tissue, we have muscle tissue and connective tissue. So in this video, I'm going to mainly focus on the connective tissue. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to start with is the development of connective tissue. CT stands for connective tissue, when I'm going to uh, mention the mesenchyme. And I'm also going to talk about the uh, classification of connective tissue, and then I'm going to talk about the extracellular matrix, which include the fibroblast types of dense connective tissue, uh, reticular tissue, and gram substance. And I'm also going to talk about the cells in connective tissue, which include the macrophage, mast cell, plasma cell, and uh, the two different types of adipocyte we have. All right, so let's start with the development of connective tissue. Uh, so it all starts when a uh, sperm fertilizes an egg and becomes what is called a zygote. And then the zygote is going to divide a lot and become a ball of cells called a blastula. And then the blastula is going to keep dividing and become uh, what is called a gastrula. And already here you can see that the cells are starting to differentiate. You can see that uh, you can have an outer layer in blue and an inner layer in orange and then a middle layer in green. Alright, so the outer layer in blue right here, we call this one the ectoderm. And the ectoderm is eventually going to form things like the skin and nervous system. Alright, and the inner layer in orange, we call this one the endoderm. And from the endoderm, you're going to have things like the GI tract develop, the gastrointestinal tract, that's going to be the gastric system. Uh, endoderms also going to form uh, different glands in the body and also uh, respiratory tracts like the trachea, uh, bronchi and the alveoli of the lungs. But here in the middle, the green one, we call this one the mesoderm. And the mesoderm is going to form things like the mesenchyme and the mesothelium. The mesothelium is going to be a membrane of simple squamous epithelium which develops into several body cavities. But what I wanted to get to eventually is the mesenchyme because that's what's going to form the connective tissue. So the connective tissue comes from the middle germ layer, the mesoderm. All right, and from the mesenchyme is going to develop uh, things like a bone, a cartilage, tendons, ligaments, and capsules for joints, and even uh, some hematopoietic cells like the blood. All right, so if we zoom in into that picture, you're gonna see uh, different nuclei right here. You can see nuclei here and here and all those dark spots are going to be nuclei. And all those cells are going to be what we call uh, mesenchymal cells. Another thing you're going to see when you look at them in the microscope is that mesenchyme is going to have uh, cell processes which forms a network with each other. And that network that mesenchymal cells form is called the uh, syncytium. Right, and another thing you're gonna see right here, I'm gonna talk more about it later, but you can also see what we call a ground substance between the cells. It's not gonna be an empty space, you're gonna have what is called a ground substance. All right, so these mesenchymal cells form a mesenchyme, which is an embryonic tissue, because the mesenchymal cells, you're gonna find them uh, in the embryonic development. And if you look at this picture right here, uh, this is what you literally see in the microscope. In the middle here is the neural tube highlighted in blue. But in order to find these cells, in order to find the mesenchymal cells, you need to look at the sides of the neural tube highlighted for you in green. So if you ever look at it in the microscope, uh, look at this area right here, you'll find the mesenchymal cells. All right, so now that we've got the development sort out, let's look at the different classification of connective tissue. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the different types of connective tissue are going to have a common origin. That's going to be the mesenchyme, right? And we classify connective tissue into connective tissue proper uh, and connective tissue with special properties and supporting connective tissue. So if we look a little in depth in each of these categories, we'll start with the connective tissue proper. Uh, in connective tissue proper, we're going to have um, loose and dense connective tissue consisting mainly of elastine and collagen fibers. Uh, loose is just loose and it's going to be very easy to look at because you're going to have different fibers running in uh, all different directions and it's gonna be easy to find the ground substance and the uh, different nuclei in it. And I'm going to show you a picture of this later. But dense connective tissue can be classified into regular and irregular dense connective tissue. 
uh, going further with the connective tissue with special properties. Those are going to be the superheroes of connective tissue because those are going to have different abilities. Uh, we're going to have adipose tissue out here which stores uh, energy in form of lipids. Uh, you will find both uh, brown and white adipose cells which I'll uh, mention later. Uh, we're also going to have uh, hematopoietic cells. We call this a fluid connective tissue uh, from which some blood cells are going to uh, come from. Also connected tissue with special properties are the elastin, a uh, flexible type of connected tissue. Uh, you'll find a lot of these in the lungs and, and aorta and the skin. And we also have the mucous tissue composed of uh, ground substance. All right, and also gonna have supportive connected tissue consisting mainly of uh, cartilage and bones. And only by looking at all of this, you can already get a, a picture that uh, connected tissue is not only gonna be simple connective cells, uh, it's going to be very important because connective tissue are going to be responsible for uh, providing and maintaining the form of the body. It's going to uh, bind together and provide uh, mechanical support. Also going to support uh, metabolic uh, defense, transport, and even storage processes. And it's also going to support a wound reaper, actually, and inflammatory response. I'll get to that later. So now let's draw a little picture um, of what we'll expect to see. So up here, you're going to have epithelia with a basement membrane. And now let's look at the composition of connected tissue under the basement membrane. A connected tissue is made up of uh, cells, as you see here, and also extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix is made up of fibers, organic ground substance found between cells and fibers, and also fluid in which uh, cells and fibers are uh, suspended in. All right, so I want to start by talking about the extracellular matrix first and then go over to the cells of connective tissue. So as mentioned earlier, the uh, extracellular matrix consists of fibers, ground substance, and extracellular fluid. And I want to start with the fibers first. So we mainly have three types of fibers. We have uh, collagen and elastin fibers. Here you see a typical picture of loose connective tissue. As I said, it literally looks loose. You can see that both uh, collagen fibers and elastin fibers are gonna run all directions. All right, you're gonna have collagen right here and elastin right here. Uh, you can already tell that these two are really easy to tell apart because collagen are gonna be um, thicker than elastin. All right, so the third type of fibers we have in the body are reticular fibers. I'm going to talk more about this later. But uh, one thing to notice here is that you're going to always find these loose nuclei uh, looking at fibers, the fibroblasts. Uh, these are actually what uh, synthesizes the fibers, produces the fibers. But in reticular fibers, on the other hand, you will have a special type of fibroblast synthesizing the reticular fibers called the uh, reticulocytes. So before I go into these fibers, I want to talk a little bit more about the fibroblasts because it's really important to have a background knowledge about fibroblasts before going into the fibers. All right, so fibroblasts, as mentioned earlier, is the predominant cell type looking at connective tissue fibers. Uh, fibroblasts are going to synthesize proteins for ground substance and fibers. You're going to already see them in this picture. Here you see the uh, fibroblasts and here you see the uh, different fibers and behind it you can see ground substance. Alright, so fibroblasts are going to have a lot of functions going to be important in different uh, processes and also in wound healing where they become what is called myofibroblasts which contracts the uh, wound helping closing it. Also important to mention is that they're going to have many forms according to where they are. But yeah, you can't really see it here, but uh, they're also going to have uh, cell processes just like the mesenchyme. I might add a picture up here showing the cell processes of the fibroblast to illustrate it. All right, so if we go over and talk about the dense connective tissue, you will immediately see that the fibroblasts here uh, are elongated. And they're going to be pressed against the adjacent fibers. So when we look at dense connective tissue, as I mentioned earlier, we have regular and irregular uh, connective tissue. Uh, you might already sense the differences between these two. Uh, in regular dense connective tissue, you're going to have uh, their fibers run alongside each other and they're going to look nicer. And you find these in uh, tendons, for example. But irregular, on the other hand, uh, they're going to run in all directions and we'll mostly find these in deep layer of the dermis. Alright, so let's uh, look at the dense regular connective tissue a little bit to get a broader picture of, of that. In tendons, this is a picture of a tendon right here. Uh, tendons consist of both collagen fibers, both uh, dense and loose. 
and there's actually a way to distinguish those two looking at this picture and that's by looking at the nuclei of the fibroblast uh, you know that collagen fibers are going to be pressed together and that's also going to press the fibroblast making it really thin and elongated and here in the sides you're going to see that the nuclei looks different it's round so uh, here must be the loose connective tissue because there's no uh, fibers that presses the nuclei. So this right up here is a loose connective tissue. And in tendons, um, they're the same cell, but in tendons, the fibroblast that lies in collagen fibers gets the name tendoblasts. And in loose connective tissue, they keep their name fibroblasts. So we also categorize the thickness of the tendons by orders. Uh, a tendon can be up to 10 orders, I think, around there. But uh, just to give you a little picture of it, uh, the first order would be between two uh, tendoblasts in collagen. And the second order would be between two loose connective tissue across the uh, collagen fiber. All right, so if you go ahead and cut the tendon right about here and look at it in uh, a transverse section, you will see that it looks like this you will see the bundles of collagen with their tendoblast uh, clearly uh, with loose connective tissue in between each bundle. All right, so now let's look a little bit of what collagen fibers are made up of. So let's say this is a collagen right here and if you look inside it, if you continue right this picture right here, um, you will see that uh, the collagen fiber consists of a lot of small things. Those small things are called fibrils. So every circle right here is one fibril. And fibril is made out of what is called microfibril. And microfibril is made out of uh, tropocollagen helix that make up the collagen fibers. So only by looking at this picture, you can already uh, tell that uh, collagen fibers are really, really strong. And it's really important to have them strong in the, our body because we need to keep our different uh, structures in the body in place. All right, and we classify collagen fibers into different uh, types. But before I talk about the uh, different collagen types, I want to mention the suffixes we use. Because looking at the different types of collagen, you're going to see that uh, different cells are going to make different collagen types. So when you see a cell ending with blast, blast is going to be a suffix uh, that going to mean that this cell is going to produce the protein for the matrix. Remember, matrix is going to be uh, proteins for uh, fibers and uh, ground substance. And when you see the ending site, site means that uh, this cell is going to maintain the matrix and clast is going to destroy the matrix. So if you look at some examples of these, as I mentioned earlier, we have a fibroblast, but we can also see fibrocyte and fibroclast. Uh, those are going to be uh, the type of cell that produces uh, fibers. And we're going to have osteoblast, osteocyte and osteoclast, which are going to be the type of cell that produces, uh, maintains and destroys bone. And we're also going to have chondroblast, chondrocyte, and chondroclast. Those are going to be the type of cells that produces, uh, maintains, and destroys cartilage. All right, so try to keep that in mind during this video. When you look at a cartilage, you're going to mainly see a chondroblast in the slide. When you look at fibers, you can also find fibroblasts and osteoblasts when you look at um, bones. All right, so now let's look at the different type of collagen fibers we have. Uh, if I recall correctly, about 29 types of collagen uh, fibers has been found. But here are some of the uh, most important collagen type fibers we have. Um, most of the collagen fibers we have in the body are going to be type 1 collagen. And type 1 collagen, the main function of this one is that it's resistant to tension. And if you try to imagine all the places that are all the time uh, exposed to tension, it's going to be the bones, uh, skin, tendons, ligaments, and internal organs. And the cells that produces the type 1 collagen are going to be fibroblasts and osteoblasts. And the next type of collagen fibers I want to talk about is the type 2 collagen, which is resistant to pressure. And if you imagine what in the body are all the time um, exposed to pressure, that's going to be cartilage, right? The joints between bones. And here we have the chondroblasts uh, making the cartilage. And the next type is the type 3 collagen, uh, which is mainly going to be found in internal organs. Uh, type 3 collagen is important in maintaining the uh, structure in organs and the cells that produce type 3 collagen are going to be fibroblasts and reticular cells. 
And as I talk about the reticular cells, I'm going to talk about this later, but uh, reticular cells or reticular fibers are going to mainly be type 3 collagen. All right, so the next uh, type of collagen we have is the type 4 collagen. And if you, if you remember from epithelial tissue, when you look at the basal membrane, that the basal membrane consists of basal lamina and reticular lamina, uh, the basal lamina consists of uh, type 4 collagen. And here, uh, the epithelial cells, muscle cells, and Schwann cells are going to be are going to synthesize the uh, type four collagen. And the main function of the type four collagen is support. It supports the basal lamina. All right. So the next type is the type five collagen. And whenever you think of type five collagen, you can think of type one collagen because you always find type five with type one. And the next one is type seven. And so a uh, type four uh, makes the basal lamina. And type 7 is what connects the basal lamina with the reticular lamina. And here you're going to have an epithelial cells that are going to uh, produce the type 7 collagen. And type 7 collagen, as I said, is uh, what connects the uh, basal lamina with the reticular lamina. So this one's going to be an anchor for the basal lamina to underlying tissue. All right, so the next one is the type 9 collagen. Whenever you think of type 9, think of type 2, because type 2 and type 9 are going to be together, and type 1 and 5 are going to be together. All right, so 2 and 9 are important numbers, and 1 and 5 are important number numbers, and 4 and 7 are important numbers, because these are always going to be together. All right, so the uh, next is the type 10 collagen fibers, which forms uh, bones or supports bones. A uh, type 10 collagen fiber is uh, synthesized by chondrocytes, and this one forms a network inside the bone. All right, so that's what I wanted to talk about in uh, collagen fibers. Now let's go ahead and talk about the elastic fibers. Um, elastic fibers has three types, as you see right here. You have oxytalan, can be uh, found in the eye and also where the uh, stratified squamous epithelium um, of the skin connects with the basal lamina. Um, oxytalan fibers are not elastic because they don't have any elastine, but they are highly resistant to pulling forces because they contain strong fibrillin uh, twines. So uh, the next is the elaunin, consisting of a mixture between uh, elastine and fibrillin. Uh, these are mainly found in ligaments of the teeth and also the uh, connective tissue of the dermis. So the next is the uh, proper elastic fibers, which also uh, consists of fibrillin and elastine, but this one has a higher amount of elastine. And this one's typically found in the uh, aorta, for example. All right, so that is elastic fibers. Next one is the reticular fibers. And as I mentioned earlier, the reticular fibers are mainly going to be a uh, type 3 collagen. And uh, the reticular fibers are made from the reticulocytes. And the reticulocytes are going to make a network and support soft tissue, uh, such as the liver, uh, the bone marrow, and the lymphatic system. So if we look at this picture right here, this is going to be a cross-section of the uh, lymph nodes. Um, in order to find the reticular fibers, you need to, um, or it's easier to look at the reticular fibers if you zoom into the lighter areas. So if you go ahead and look at the uh, one of the lighter areas, this one for example, you will see that it looks like this. And just um, only by looking at this picture, it's really messy. So let's try to uh, organize a little bit. Uh, so if you remember, what cells do you find most in lymphatic system? That's going to be a lymphocytes, right? So lymphocytes are going to be, uh, you know, you see those dark um, nuclei, dark, dark rounded nuclei right here with a small cytoplasm. Uh, all, those, uh, all those cells are going to be lymphocytes. But in order to find the reticulocytes, you need to look really closely because reticulocytes are going to have um, cell processes. So, so their cytoplasm are going to be more than the uh, lymphocytes and their nuclei are going to be lighter. So if you look closely you can have this one for example you can see that the uh, nuclei of this one is lighter and you can also see the cell process right here so this is a reticulocyte and uh, you also find one here for example this uh, processes in this light nuclei and this one's also a reticulocyte and and um, this one's also a reticulocyte and here you see one as well and here you see one as well all right so you really have to sharpen your eyes to see the reticulocytes so if we zoom into another place in the same slide, you'll see this one. 
Uh, can you pause the video and try to differentiate the reticulocytes from the lymphocytes? And uh, then I will try to uh, look for some uh, myself. All right, so uh, here you can see one uh, reticulocyte because you can see the, uh, the light nuclei and the cell processes. And here you see one as well. Um, see if I can find some others. Here you see one as well. And here you see one as well. And you can also see one right here. You can see the nuclear lighter and you also see the cell processes right here. All right, so that's how you differentiate the reticulocytes from the lymphocytes. And the reticulocytes are going to synthesize and form the reticular fibers. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the ground substance. Um, the ground substance, if you, if you remember from which I mentioned earlier, lies between the fibers and the cells, or um, it fills the space between them. And the good thing in having the ground substance is that it acts as a lubricant for fibers and cells, and it also acts as a barrier for invaders. So in ground substance, you can have a fluid from which uh, cells and fibers are suspended in, uh, together with minerals. And you're also going to have uh, different proteins. You're going to have um, the three different proteins I want to mention. The first one is uh, glucoaminoglycans. The uh, glucosaminoglycans are going to be long and unbranched of uh, repeating disaccharides. And then the next one is the proteoglycans. Uh, these are protein cores uh, to which glucosaminoglycans are linked to. And also the third one is the adhesive glucoprotein, which are large macromolecules responsible for um, fastening different components of the extracellular matrix together. So um, if when, whenever you think of multi-adhesive glucoprotein, just think of glue, because that's what you're going to do. It's going to connect different uh, parts of the matrix together. And uh, one more thing I wanted to mention uh, when I talk about the ground substance is that you're going to have an enzyme in the ground substance called the matrix metalloproteinase. This one is a type of peptidase uh, degrading different types of extracellular matrix proteins. So this one is really important when it comes to uh, regulating uh, the different proteins in the ground substance. All right, so that is the ground substance. And the next thing I want to talk about is the cells in, uh, in um, connected tissue. And the cells in connected tissue I wanted to talk about is the macrophage, mast cell, plasma cell, and adipocytes. So uh, let's start with the macrophage. The macrophage uh, comes from the bone marrow. And this one, when it's in the blood, it circulates as uh, what is called the monocyte. And then when it enters the uh, tissue, it becomes a macrophage. So whenever you think of macrophage, just think of Pac-Man, because that's what it's going to do. It's going to go around the tissue and and uh, phagocyte or eat uh, different stuff that's not supposed to be there and, and then present it to other um, white blood cells to uh, include them in the battle. And so when you look at them in the microscope, microphage are characterized by their nuclei. You can see that this nuclei is, is um, being shaped, right? And if you look at it from, a, from another picture, now again, it looks really messy, but uh, if you try to uh, sharpen your eyes again, you can see this cell, for example, this one has a bean shape, so this is a microphage. And uh, this one right here is a microphage as well, this is a bean shape. And this one right here, and, and you have one right here also. So that's how you differentiate the macrophage. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the mast cell. The mast cells are really easy to differentiate also. These are large cells and have many granules in the cytoplasm containing histamine and heparin. When a mast cell is triggered uh, by an antigen, uh, histamine is secreted. And when histamine is secreted, it increases the capillary uh, permeability so that cells can uh, arrive and enter the inflammated area easily. And also when mast cell is triggered, it's going to um, contract the bronchioles. Histamines are a major reason for allergies because uh, they cause inflammation where they are exposed to uh, antigens of uh, something you're allergic to. So the pills you take against allergic, the allergic pills are usually of antihistamine. All right, so uh, that's how they look like in the microscope. And if you look at it in another picture, you can see uh, they can also be really dark right here because they contain a lot of uh, granules. So uh, that is mast cell. The next thing is the plasma cell. And the plasma cell arises from beta lymphocytes. And what does that mean? That means that remember when I talk about the macrophage presenting the antigen to different cells. 
and it's kind of a cascade reaction so uh, you're gonna have beta lymphocyte that are presented to the antigen and then the beta lymphocyte is gonna uh, make the plasma cell and the plasma cell is gonna synthesize antibodies against that antigen the beta lymphocyte was presented to and uh, if you look at it in the microscope you can see the plasma cell looks like this you can see that uh, they would call this a cartwheel nucleus because the the nucleus literally looks like a cartwheel we're gonna have the nucleolus right here and the eochromatin in the, in the middle and then um, a big cytoplasm right here all right so uh, here's another picture as well here you can see the plasma cell you can see the cytoplasm right here and the nuclei is is big and it's dark around the edges and the middle is, is kind of light so that's another way to to differentiate look for it in the center should be light and around it should be uh, darker all right so uh, the next thing i wanted to talk about is the white adipocytes and adipocytes are really easy to see because they have a big lipid droplet inside them you can see right here those those uh, spaces right here are the lipid droplet inside the cell. Uh, these type of cells are going to be the fat storage or the energy storage, which are uh, burned later when we need them. And at the sides of the uh, and at the sides of each cell, you're going to see that the lipid droplet is stored right here in the cytoplasm. And because the lipid droplet is big, it's going to push the um, the nucleus of the adipocyte to the side, so that you can see on each uh, cell, you can see the uh, nucleus of the adipocyte at the at the corner right here. You can see it right here. You can see it here. You can see it here and here. All right, and the adipocytes is what we call subcutaneous tissue because they lie under the skin, and uh, this is what we call white fat because uh, it looks white and it's it's the primary fat we have in the body. And this is another picture too kind of show you how they look like in the microscope you can have the lipid droplet here in the in the um, in the cytoplasm and the nucleus is um, pushed to the side right here all right and another type of adipocyte we have is a brown adipocyte so when we are first when we are first born we do have a decent amount of brown fat within us but uh, as adults we uh, more or less get rid of that brown fat and we call the brown fat brown because they literally look brown underneath the microscope. It looks like that because they have a lot of uh, mitochondria within the cytoplasm. You're gonna see the lipid droplet here and you can see the, uh, the cytoplasm of the uh, adipocytes is brown. And not only the lipid droplet is also gonna be a little darker than the white adipocyte. And here's also another picture to show you. You see the uh, brown um, cytoplasm in the adipocytes. All right, so that was all the structures I wanted to talk about in the connective tissue. Now, just to challenge you a little bit, here we see a pic uh, three pictures of uh, different types of connective tissue. Uh, could you pause the video and tell me all the uh, cells you see in these pictures? And I'm going to reveal the answer in three, two, one. Here we go. So that is uh, the answer here. You see the loose connective tissue with um, elastic fibers right here, the thin ones that run in all directions. And the behind here, the thick ones, you're gonna see the collagen fibers and the fibroblasts, as I mentioned earlier. You're gonna see fibroblasts uh, between the uh, fibers. And in the background here, you can see ground substance. And here is um, a dense regular connective tissue bundles in uh, the tendon. These are tendocytes. And here in white, you're going to see loose connective tissue between them with fibroblasts. And this right here is uh, reticulocytes and lymphocytes. Here you, see, uh, here you see the lymphocytes and the reticulocytes are here, for example. And here you see one and uh, here you see one as well. Alright, so that was a video about the connective tissue and I hope this was helpful.